Hello, my name is Helen Adler. I am the owner of the Pet Maven, which is a house called Pet Grooming and Cat Care Services in New York. I'm with my assistant Carol today. We're going to be demonstrating a full cat room. Actually, we're going to be doing a lion cut today on two bicolor Persian cats. They are blue and white, Mashu and Pichu. And they're really very, very darling, and they're very, very calm, and very, very docile. Um, they have a rather interesting um, history. They are rescue Persian cats. They were found in a park in a gym bag after Hurricane Sandy. Um, fortunately, they were, they were gotten by a really terrific rescue group in, in New York. Um, they, were, they were found actually in a stadium. And despite their traumatic experience, they are extremely gentle and loving. So today we're doing a lion cut. Um, it's much easier for the owner um, in this instance um, to maintain their coats. So both um, have a lot of fur and hair as Persians do, um, but they, their coats are very woolly. Um, so it's a, a much easier way for the client to maintain um, their coat so that they don't get matted. So the first thing um, that we do before we start the grooming, we have Mashu is the first cat that we're going to be grooming is we're going to trim the claws. Um, and I know sometimes people ask me, um, is it really necessary to do that? But these are indoor cats, and while some indoor cats will use a scratching post and they will shed their nails, often cats don't and they need to be trimmed. And I can assure you that most cat groomers would not begin to groom any cat without trimming the nails ahead of time, okay? And I have seen situations where the nails, the claws are neglected and they actually grow into the pads. So it's really important to have their nails um, trimmed. And you can see that Mashu is very, very gentle. He's very, very calm. And he actually sleeps during the groom, <laughs> which is unique, but he really, really enjoys it. Okay, one more paw to do. And you know, Persians have a lot of hair on their feet, so you really need to kind of press, what's, what's called is expressing the paw. So what I'm doing is I'm actually pressing down on the paw, and in that way then I can actually get to the, to the claw and trim it. Okay, and the next thing I do is I clean the ears. So we're gonna do that with a cosmetic disc. These nice little discs. Um, I like them better than um, cotton balls, largely because the filament from the cotton ball doesn't, um, doesn't um, get into the ears. I'm using a nice ear cleaner. And just really, you're not going inside the ear canal, but essentially the, uh, the outside of the ear. And a lot of little flaps, which you can get in there. Some cats are more tolerant than others. His ears aren't horribly dirty. He's got some waxy um, buildup, which we'll just gently remove. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the pattern um, for the haircut. I call it, it's basically a rough cut. About 90-95% of the um, groom will happen now. He'll be bathed, he'll be blow dried, and then we'll do a finishing haircut on him where he, so that he feels like velvet. In this instance, we're leaving the tail Sometimes on a lion cut, you can do a pom-pom tail where you take it down kind of halfway and then you have this kind of plume at the end. But um, we're keeping his tail this time. Um, we're also going to keep a, sometimes you can do a, a larger mane. In this instance, because he's got so much hair and it's thick and it kind of protrudes out, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of trim out this later on is we're going to give him a short haircut. He actually has um, a pretty good line to follow from his last lion cut. Essentially start at the neck and go down to the base of the tail. We really try to, because my business is, is going into people's homes, um, you know, we really try to be cognizant of the, the amount of hair that's coming off. So we really keep up on putting it in a pail. And 
And lion cuts for most cats, unless they are extremely sensitive and have very pink skin, we do take the blade. It really goes in reverse. So they get really, really, it gets very close to the skin and they'll have beautiful velvet haircut. And you can see he's one of the most tolerant. He requires virtually no restraint at all. So as I'm going along, the cat's skin is very thin. It's like paper. He's a pretty solid cat. He's six years old. You kind of pull the skin because it, the blade can get into the skin if you're not careful. So I first start the haircut while he's sitting up, sitting, actually lying down, and then we'll kind of put him on his side so I can start to deal with his under belly. Now, sometimes people ask me, why do you take a beautiful long-haired cat and shave it down? Well, I get a lot of clients that want, it's easier for them to maintain the coat if it's shorter. So we can do a haircut where we keep an inch or two inches left on the cat. But in this instance, the cats really, really love having less hair. They're more energetic. And you'll see afterwards, you know, Masha will just prance around. I'm working a little bit on the arms. Um, the arms, you kind of take it down about an inch below the elbow. That's where I'm setting it. Unless you're doing ankle boots. We're not doing ankle boots. We're kind of doing full boots here. Um, so it's about an inch off of the elbow. And we'll clean that up afterwards to make certain that both boots are even. You have to be careful when you're working on the cat's belly. They have nipples, males and females, both have nipples. So you just have to, you have to kind of know where they are. Um, and you have to just be very, very gentle and kind of more skimming. Um, and I'm now setting the boot pattern for the, for the back legs. And I take it right under what's called the hock. It's kind of where the heel is to the foot. The other thing that you need to be aware of when you're doing a lion cut or doing any trimming is, is periodically checking the temperature of the blade because the blade will heat up. Um, on a matted cat, from the friction of getting through the mats, it will heat up. So you need to be aware of that. It's very sloppy grooming if a cat gets burned because the groomer has not checked the blade. Let him just rest for two minutes. I'm actually going to cool my blade. Uh, I take the blade off the clipper when I do it because the, um, the coolant that I use um, can really kind of gunk up your clippers so there's no reason to do that I usually move away from the cat when I'm doing it some cats are very sensitive to the sound um, and also I don't want to be spraying the coolant on the cat the other thing that groomers do is they can sometimes swap out blades so if I ha did have another blade which I do but it's not um, as sharp as this one um, I could switch out blades and that way I wouldn't need to use the cool one on it and I really have to make certain that it's you know cleaned off but this has a lubricant as it's antibacterial um, as well as pull, pulls the blade okay so we're now going to do the other side and then he's going to be pretty close to being um, bath ready for Most of the time, the last thing I do is a sanitary on them because most cats don't really like you shaving their butt, but he's pretty good. To be very careful, you have to really have a, a, a keen understanding of the, of the cat's anatomy because 
right in this area here you have a you have the flank and it's a very very thin area and you have to just really make certain that when you're doing any kind of haircut that um, the area is flat that you don't have the big flank sticking up otherwise um, you could you could you could cut a cat and because he's not matted I don't need to be this is a five speed um, clipper I, I could I'm really keeping it on a, a lower speed and that way it's it's very very quiet um, some cats you know are very sensitive to noise okay so again we're doing a half we're doing about an inch below the elbow on the other area that you have to be really really um, careful with is the armpit um, because you also have flaps in there so we really try to make certain that the area is flat and if there are a lot of mats I sometimes work from behind. I know some people think that cats look silly with lion cuts but some of them are embarrassed but most of them really like it. It's very freeing. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do before we take him into, into for his bath, yeah, often you kind of have to sometimes as you're going along, um, is to remove the hair so you don't think you have to take more hair off the cat because it kind of glues to their, um, his tail in this instance or his boots. So I'm going to do a sanitary, which is basically taking the hair away from the butt area. It's pretty good for this. Most cats really don't dig it. To be very careful, obviously. And then we'll go back over this afterwards. Um, one of the things that the owner requested in this instance is we're going to, after um, after we do his finishing haircut, is to is to thin out his tail. Um, so we will do that for the client. So I've given um, Mashu his um, rough cut, and now we're going to take him into the kitchen, which is where he's going to get his bath. I get a lot of comments from people about bathing in a kitchen and I happen to, my business is in a urban area, it's in New York City, and while it would be ideal to have a garage or a laundry room that we can bathe the cats, unfortunately due to the fact that I am doing the grooming in New York City apartments which tend to be on the smaller side, a kitchen sink is really um, the place. And I know many of you think it's not hygienic, but I can assure you that um, we take grave precaution to assure that we leave the premises um, sparkling and very, very clean. And a kitchen sink is really the right size. Um, you know, it's a confined area and you need to have a little sprayer on it. You want a wet? Yeah. Let me. So again, I'm taking one of these um, nice black cosmetic discs. They work really nicely around the eyes. I also, um, sometimes if the cat is tolerant and we can do it carefully, I'll use a children's toothbrush um, to kind of gently get into the, corner, the eye corners and um, clean that out as well. And he's pretty flat faced. You can see even the opening of his, of his nose is, is pretty, pretty small. Um, I see a big range um, with Persian cats. Some of them are what they call doll-faced, and they're not as flat-faced, and some of them um, are very flat-faced.
cats are, sometimes get uncomfortable um, when they're actually lying down and we have to turn them on their side or put them on their back. And so um, it's really helpful that I have an assistant because most of the cats really like to be held and it's another way for us to get them dried. So we're gonna put Mashu on Carol's lap and we're gonna finish drawing him that way. Not surprisingly, sometimes their legs um, are a little bit knotty. It's sometimes an area that's uh, extremely difficult for owners to manage. So, you know, I'm br kind of brushing and then I'm kind of combing through very gently and he's very, he's very tolerant. They're not, they're just a little knotty. Um, but basically what's coming off is, is kind of, they're not, they're not really um, matted per se, it's just a lot of packed undercoat um, that we're gonna work through here. Yeah, the other thing, um, if you're grooming your own cat um, when you're doing blow drying is um, you don't want to obviously blow um, air into the ears so when you're around the head you're kind of just going to fold the ear and make it into a wonton. You don't want to obviously blow it into the cat's eyes or either. Some cats are more tolerant of having warm air on their face. And the other thing is when you're blowing their rear area you don't want to blow um, the dryer into the cat's rectum. Come see me kind of have to well, it looks like Mouse Shoe has fallen asleep. Um, <laughs> most cats certainly, I mean, there's a big range in temperaments, and certainly most cats are not this calm, gentle, and docile. And I can assure you that he hasn't been sedated for this grooming. That's not something that we do. Um, but obviously, in order to demonstrate, in order to properly demonstrate, um, you know, a haircut, we needed to have a kitty subject um, that would, you know, stay still and would be docile, so that we wouldn't have to be um, constantly wrangling with him. Um, but there are some cats that are, you know, that need to be groomed, that are um, more aggressive, and you know, sometimes those can be done at home. We need to use a muzzle, and sometimes. Those cats need to be taken to a vet's office, and, um, and the vet will need to sedate them, and then they need to be monitored while they're being groomed. So we are going to um, finish up um, Mashu's haircut. I'm going to go back over him. He's going to be completely like velvet. Um, we're going to probably, because um, the owner would like to have their, on um, his mane, um, certainly um, thinned out a bit, um, so we'll, we'll do some of that. We'll do that on the tail, and then we'll um, give him some nice um, boots. And again, as I'm in near the flank area, I'm being very, very careful. Sometimes you have to manipulate the legs or the body to make certain that you can flatten the area. And I'm still checking periodically that the blade is not too hot, something you always need to do. blend his mane because the owner would like it not as poofy. So I'm going to do that with a comb guard, um, which would doesn't shave it all the way down. It just kind of skims out the coat a bit. You could also just pluck the cheek area. This gives them a nice rounded, sweet appearance. So 
going to do that for a bit. And it doesn't, it doesn't bother them. It doesn't hurt. I'm just kind of pulling out excess undercoat. Gives them, and then we can, we can trim above the eyes as well, which we're not going to do right now. Okay, let's see what he looks like sitting up. I'm going to put him on the floor. He's done. Let me just make certain all his loose hair, because we don't certainly don't want the cat. It's really important that you kind of brush out the cat well, comb him out after the groom, because you don't really want to have the cat tracking hair around your client's home. You already have enough to begin with, right, honey? Okay, he's done. We're going to put him down. Pichu, Mashu's brother. He's so patiently waiting in the waiting area for his haircut. He's longer than his brother, and he's a little bit woollier. Um, and he's also going to get a lion cut. But you can see, if you remember, he's actually really kind of has grown in um, from his last grooming a few months ago. So we're going to start with his nails again. And he's also a very gentle soul, very similar in temperament to Mashu. important um, when you're when you're bathing a cat. Um, not all cats are tolerant about getting their heads um, shampooed and wet, so a lot of times you don't. But in this instance, if you're going to, um, again, similar to blow drying, you have to be really careful not to get water into the ear canal. So you got to close it off like a you make a wonton, and then you also want to make certain you don't get air, water um, up the the cat's nose, particularly. You know, in flat face, because they don't have very wide openings, um, and you certainly don't want them to be coughing up water and gagging on water. So you just have to be really careful um, with the openings on the cat's face. Ooh.